Hi there once again and welcome to another Espresso Mechanic tutorial and this is number six in the series of Espresso Nuts and Bolts. In this one we're going to be looking at making one of these and in order to achieve this we're going to be using a node from the preset nodes within Espresso and this is going to be the action timer which we've never looked at before. That's what we're about in this tutorial so without further ado let's see if we can make this happen. Let's take a quick look at what we've got on the screen. So a sphere, which I've set to 25 centimetres in radius. I've given it a dynamics tag. I haven't changed a thing in here. I've even left the shape as automatic. It could be a convex hole, but I've just left it set up as it, it comes. So nothing's changed in there. Up here at the top, we've got a gate, which is essentially a null object, which acts as a hinge. I've got a cube grouped into this. I've made it 100 by 80 by 5 and again I've given it a dynamics tag. The only thing I've changed in here is the shape to a moving mesh on this occasion. Everything else has been left the same. Moving on to this gutter I've got here. I've got simply a profile. It's a U-shaped profile set up as follows. So we've got 100 in the height. The, the B dimension is 50. The S 10 and the T 10. Set it up in the correct plane. I've left everything else as the way it was and this is just swept using a sweep here along a, a two point spline so if we go into point mode our first point is here and you can see our second point is here and so you can see where the spline is it's just a simple two point spline in my container here which is a subdivision surface that I have simply renamed container again it's a dynamic object and again it's the only thing that's changed is, is the shape to a static mesh on this occasion and the same actually for the gutter I didn't go through that that's a static mesh as well that's the only thing I've changed in those two the cylinder started life as a parametric object I made it editable and then fashioned it into this container and then I've just added a bevel deformer an offset of one and three subdivisions that's all I've done so it's a simple setup you can do it however you like you don't have to follow this you can do something different I've also got some text in here and again, nothing special about this at all. It's just no text. I've set it up with a depth of five, one subdivision, changed my uh, font. I've, I've got Lemon Milk Pro in there. You may not have that on your machine. It doesn't matter, use something else. Um, and then it's left aligned and it's set to a height of 40. That's all I've done. So a simple setup. So how do we get this to work? Well, obviously we need a null and we need to call it Espresso. We'll give it an Espresso tag. We've got the window open for the Espresso editor here and we're ready to start work. OK, great. So the first node that we're going to bring in is the actual action timer. So that hides in the system presets and it's in animation and time and we've got action timer here. So if we bring this in and we'll take a look at it, that's a little bit small. What's happened there? It's way too small. <laughs> Let's try bringing that in again. Is it, have we got something set up wrong here? Let's just say 100%. No. What's going on there? What is going on there? Frame all. Oh, okay. Right. Let's just bring that at 100%. Thank you. That's what I want. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But anyway, right, we're ready to go. So the action timer. It has three inputs at the input stage here. We can add more, but there's no need. We don't need them. At the output stage, a couple of outputs and we can add more, but again, we don't need to. So how does this work? Well, at the, the first input here is the current time. So obviously it's based around time and we've also got a start time, a stop time. So everything is based around time. And then at the output stage, we have an action and we also have a state. Now, this should put you in mind of a monoflop node because it's actually quite similar if we just add the state. Now, the action here works in exactly the same way as the out. It's simply a bool value. So this is going to be zero or one. And the state is a, a value between zero and one. So they're both virtually, well, they're both exactly the same. It's just that the action has a different name to the out. Now, at the input stage here, things are a little bit different. The current time is the same as the time here. And that's the, where the difference comes. So they're the similarities. So we've got the time is the same, the out is the same, the state is the same. But 
the start and the stop time is where the difference lies because with the monoflop we've got a trigger here and that's triggered well actually it's triggered by an action normally isn't it um, because we normally trigger it via perhaps say some kind of logic node so we might use for example the logic compare we might say that if there's a one generated here and this was set up as a one shot node then a one coming out of here would be plumbed into this trigger and it would make the monoflop work and of course the duration is the length of time that we want the mono monoflop to actually work for so that might be 30 frames for example so that's where these two things are similar but there is a very important difference because the action timer it works with the current time so if we bring in a time node and we plumb this into here so that's taking the current time from the timeline here now the start and stop we can say we want the action timer to start at say 30 frames and we want it to stop at 60 frames so if we put 30 in here let's take that back 30 and we put 60 in there our action timer it will get its current time from the timeline as soon as it hits 30 frames it's going to start as soon as it hits 60 frames it will stop so that's how this is going to work so similar to this setup but not exactly the same because this is based upon the result coming out of in this case a compare node it could also be a condition node and there could be other ways that you could make this work as well via actions really but this works entirely with time so that's the important difference between the two so let's just get rid of these so if you know that you've got a certain action that you want to take place it, and it must absolutely must begin at 30 frames and it must finish at 60 frames then this is the node to use the action timer use this rather than the monoflop because this is the perfect node for the job okay so I hope that explains that and it's all clear that being the case let's continue and we'll start to build the expression that's going to drive all of our stuff over here the first node I'm going to bring in is a range mapper so I'll go and get one of those and I'll plumb the state into the input. So our upper and lower ranges, we can leave those as they are because the value will be zero to one here. So that's perfect for the job. Our output range here, I'm going to say degree because we're going to be passing a degree value to the gate here. And we'll bring that in now and just leave that there ready to go. So we'll be going from naught, I think, to minus 90, if my memory serves me correctly. If it doesn't, we'll have to change things. <laughs> but uh, we'll leave it at that for now. And then we'll also use the spline because we'll need the gate to behave in a certain fashion. So I'm going to put four points on here. The first and last we can place at zero and then zero zero and one on the so zero on the y and, and one on the x and of course zero zero on the other side there this particular point can go at point three along the x one in the y and this can be set to point seven and one and then we can work with our tangents so let's see what we've got the left tangent needs to be minus 25 on this particular node or rather 0.25 I should say <laughs> minus 25 is a bit big minus 0.25 again we can set this to minus 0.25 and that sets both of those up correctly the same here And finally, this should probably already be set at, my, at 0.25, and it is. So that's great. So the, the spline is set up as we need it. So the gate will open, it will pause, and then it will close. That's what we want there. So wh where do we need to go from here? Well, our gate, if we just select it, we want it to rotate around this particular axis, around the x-axis. So that's going to be rotation P. And we 
can plumb this into here. And our action timer at the moment, we've got it set up as I, I just set it up at 30 to 60. Let's see what happens there. It probably won't be correct, but we'll just see what happens. So let's just run the timeline and it opens and closes. It's opened and closed before the sphere has even got there. So obviously we've got to work with the, the actual times that we want this to actually run. Let's have a quick look and see where we are. Well, the sphere is at 77 frames. It's, it's got there at 77 frames. It may have got there a little bit before then, actually. What I'll try, let's try, say, 70. Or shall we go a little bit earlier? Let's go 60 and finish at 90. And we'll also allow ourselves a bit more time on the timeline, I think. Let's go 200 frames. OK, let's see what happens. See if we've got it anywhere near working. Well, it sort of does, doesn't it? It's not quite, though, because it's batting the sphere away when it closes. So you can see that the, the this is where this is important. You've got to get your time set up exactly right. So we need to go a little bit later. So let's go, shall we say, I tell you what, let's go 70. And we'll go to 100 and see if that works. Well, nearly, but the sphere's overshooting the container now. So, I mean, there's two options here. We can either move the container or we can just go a little bit later. Well, let's go later. Let's go, say, 70. Let's go 80 to 110. Let's see what we get now. Ah, now that's nearly right, but not quite. So let's go 75 and just split the difference. 75105 and there you go it's working pretty much perfectly now it just about gets to the gate the gate opens and it's falling into the container so you can see how easy this is to set up you might have to do a little bit of playing around but if we absolutely wanted our frames to be set to 75 and then our gate to close by 105 frames that's what we can do and we can set that up really easily using the the action timer the next thing we're going to do i've got some text saying closed and it also says open at the right time now again the action here that's perfect for the job so if we bring the text in we've got that there and we'll also bring in a logic condition so bring one of these in plum air switch or plumb our action into the switch and in our input here we'll say we want firstly to change the type of data to a string because we want to use text so we can say closed and open plumb this into our text and we want to go to object properties, text spline. And now let's see what we get. And there you go. It works perfectly. So it's quite a simple node, the action timer, but quite a powerful node. You know, it allows you to do quite a lot of different things. Much the same, as I say, as the, as the actual monoflop, because this action is exactly the same as the out on the monoflop, does exactly the same thing. But it gives you a sort of secondary, or it allows you to do a kind of secondary animation, I suppose. So you could say that that's what we're doing here. We, we're literally using it to drive a secondary animation. So yeah, it's, it's quite a powerful little node and well worth having in your armory. It's one that's, you, you know, you're going to probably reach for if you've got certain things that you need to happen at the at exact times, it's going to be great for that. So always bear it in mind. But that is literally what I wanted to show you in this tutorial. So we're just about done with just a few nodes. So I hope this has been interesting for you and that you've learned something new and that uh, it will be of value to you in your own projects. And if you have enjoyed the tutorial, as I always say, then please give the video a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel. Please leave a comment and ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please share the video because all this good stuff helps to keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that about wraps this one up. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.